Here we are with the new H23A VTEC um, and the new transmission casing and all that built out. Uh, Simon Nomis Industries. Uh, I cannot speak highly enough about anyone. Uh, he is the legend behind this motor. Uh, the transmission, I'll go over that real quick. It's OS Geekin uh, 4.05 with a Civic Type R with let's see, it's first through fourth on Civic Type R transmission ratios. Um, the fifth is LS, so it'll help with highway with the 4.05 final drive ratio. And the previous two shops that had worked on this first one was uh, Edwin Performance who did the original Bro Performance kit um, all of the sleeves and such on the transmission that were supposed to be bolting up and aligning to the engine were wrong and then FFR Fabrication, Tony uh, he attempted to correct by sleeving and welding a section of this, actually making it worse than it was, which is unfortunate but you know, he was out of his element, and uh, that was just a, a shitty situation. However, on the engine stuff, he was also off from top dead center by a tooth. So the whole time I ran that last previous setup, I was running it with incorrect timing, and the engine was never timed to the ECU either, because all the markings were missing. So that was a fucking disaster. Now, what do we have in the engine? So, this is a... RLZ race head with Ferrea 6000 competition plus valves on the, both the plus one intake and the exhaust. So this is like their highest end valve. Um, these are a set of custom DD Tech slash Nomis Industries uh, Stage 3 or Stage 3 Plus. Uh, they're based on Crower cores now, which is pretty cool. So they actually made incredibly good valve to valve and piston to valve clearancing for me uh, by changing the cam center line um, on the block let's see what can I tell you guys oh yeah also on the head it's a Brian Crower tool steel retainers so I mean it's a street motor designed for the Civic so this is going to be something that lasts uh, without a million miles uh, going through titanium uh, valve train would just not last, right? So tool steel, by contrast, it's heavier, less likely to rev as high, um, but it will last significantly longer than the titanium retainers would. So that's why I opted to go with those. And they also have a Skunk XP uh, valve spring. so. This motor, we're assuming, is going to land about 9,000 RPM, uh, where it starts to taper off. Um, it is a 13 one compression, uh, custom Wysico pistons. Um, the rods are Carrillo Pro SAs. It's all touched up, lightened, balanced. All the clearancing was done by Simon at Novice Industries. Um, and you can tell like this is just gorgeous like we went with a new oil pan and I don't think I'm showing off too much of the sauce but you get the idea it's just literally everything has gone through every single board, uh, bolt is torqued and ready to go um, we did every mod possible to keep this thing reliable for a long time because it's hard to get to um, you know, we still have adjustable cam gears right here uh, the only thing I have to take off is the crank pulley when we go and red lock tight in three studs here that we ordered up from Honda and then I put on the cover itself um, but every single thing has gone through with a fine tooth comb and it's absolutely gorgeous um, I honestly don't show this stuff enough and this is this is perfection when it comes to engine builder being an amazing friend and um, just I'm incredibly excited for this one because this has been about a year and a half since it's been down and uh, that wasn't 
entirely on Simon or, or COVID bullshit. That was simply like we were trying to make a game plan of what needed to happen because of all the failures of the previous two shops. Um, so we're honestly aiming for 300 wheel horsepower naturally aspirated motor here. Uh, I have a little 60cc jet of water meth to keep air temps down. Um, we've got a huge oil cooler. We've got the right transmission ratios. Um, and then Chris and I, who you guys might know Chris from the 20B twin turbo car, uh, we're going to be doing the HDB kit from Bro Performance correctly this time. And after watching the video a few times, I'm like, how in the fuck did these shops do what they did? You know, it's honestly like shaving this down, shaving this down, aligning the axle. Like, I guarantee I had axle bind and transmission bind on the first motor. There's no way it would have made the power it did if it wasn't driveline issues. And um, it's very unfortunate. It's a very expensive mistake for trusting a essentially a drag racing shop to do uh, quality work. Um, and I hope that you guys can understand that that is that goes for everything in cars. You know, drag racing tuner is only going to tune wide open throttle and um, so on and so forth. But uh, Simon and his brother Jason did the original swap taking that motor built by FFR, which was like we dropped it RLZ head he was supposed to space it properly. He he didn't. Uh, then he he did the the timing belt incorrectly, which is why it was always off. But they dropped it into the Civic, and uh, yeah, this thing is pretty much fully built out for for canyons and daily driving, and it's got everything from you know ARP studs to Willwood four pistons to you know dingy headlights and uh, I ended up keeping my I don't know if you guys can see that there's like a FC seat and the dash is all like super minty we just we balance everything out here to where it would be a great driving experience so I just wanted to give them a little shout out uh, it's I'll probably never put it in the description but it's it's Namus Industries on Instagram and uh it's actually going to be running his coil unplug kit, um, which is like a Toyota drop in coil and it hides underneath the valve cover, which is super cool because this car being in California, being concealed and stealthy is definitely part of the game. So what was great is when this thing is in the engine bay, you can't even tell that it's a aftermarket engine. Like there's nothing, it's not overly clean. It's not like too obvious for if you're pulled over or whatever the header looks stock the intake manifold is stock it's just modified a little bit but uh yeah this was a a long time coming on this build and uh i cannot thank these guys enough so i'll finally get to put it together chris and i will go to town machining this out and doing this properly and then uh we'll drop it in and and get to enjoy what might be a 300 horsepower natural aspirated motor um, doing an old style of uh, no VVT no crazy stuff like that on the valve train it's simply just cam gears set them up VTEC set it up and uh, tune as necessary now that I've done a bunch more of these it's kind of like a second nature right I know exactly what it should and how it should work. Um, man, you guys, if you keep seeing these low VTEC engagement points, they're fucking up. <laughs> you shouldn't even be able to feel that. <laughs> VTEC, when you do the primary cam properly, it, uh, it comes on and you're hearing a note change, but you're not hearing a power dip. So it's going to be a really fun, rowdy car uh, and a VX chassis, so it should be just the best little street beast ready for the mountains. Thanks again, Simon and Jason. I'm checking out. I'm gonna uh, try to figure out a way to get this thing out with the engine hoist cherry picker and put it on my lawn and then move the pallet around, and that way I can just set it all up for, uh, for proper machining. 
right, y'all. Take care.